Hi, fives and sixes. I'm going to continue reading our book. Um, we're up to part two now, and the title of this part is called The Power Over Life and Death. Chapter 18, The Mouth of Hell. Alfred couldn't believe his eyes. The Lord Protector had conjured this mythical beast to life. The book, the ancient markings on the floor, the chanting, the medieval sword, the king's blood. All of them played their part in these dark arts. No wonder the king had become nothing but a walking shadow. He seemed to be just a pawn in the Lord Protector's wicked game. From the other side of the keyhole, Alfred watched the scene unfold. The griffin beat its mighty wings and the golden flames licked the walls of the palace ballroom. It was like looking into the mouth of hell. Death, destruction. This was evil in its purest form. All would be forced to kneel before it or suffer a terrible fate at the claws of the beast. The griffin let out a deaf, deafening cry. Whack! The boom-proof glass, the boom -proof glass windows cracked. Plaster fell from the ceiling. Rumble. The sound was so loud that the king covered his ears in pain. All of a sudden, he came back into the land of the living. No, he cried as he leapt at the Lord Protector to wrestle the ancient sword from his hands. I won't do this. Set me free. The royal guards pounced on him, but he just managed to grab the sword and lunge at the beast. Ah, he screamed as the sword sliced through the griffin's heart of fire. Whoosh. In the blink of an eye, the mighty beast vanished into air, into thin air. It was it was as if it were nothing more than an illusion. The king dropped the sword, clank, and the Lord Protector's face darkened with fury. He gestured to one of the guards who struck the king hard across the face with his gloved hand. Thwack! It knocked the king out cold. He collapsed onto the floor with a thud. From behind the tall wooden door, Alfred desperately wanted to call out to his father, but he was frozen in fear. After all, he had just seen a monster. Just as the boy was about to tiptoe back up to his bedroom, he felt someone or something behind him. Slowly, he turned round. The all-seeing eye was staring right back at him. They were, eye to, they were eye to gigantic eye. The game was up. Chapter 19. Silent Scream. Alfred had been discovered Alfred had been discovered out of his bedroom in the dead of the night. He'd seen things he should have never seen. Goodness knows what the Lord Protector would do to him now. Have him sent to the Tower of London or worse. Alfred had to escape and fast. Goodbye, chirped the boy as he dashed off down the corridor as fast as his little legs would carry him. The all-seeing eye pursued him at speed. But Alfred turned as Alfred turned a corner, he tripped over the octobutt, which was trundling along the floor. Clunk. Oh! The robot had been carrying a silver tray in one of its three remaining arms. On it was a pair of stinking old boots. Would you care for a crumpet? asked the robot brightly, even though it was on its back, waggling its arms like it was an upturned beetle. With all his strength, Alfred righted the robot and gave it back its tray. That way, he said, as he set it off in the direction of which he'd come. As the all-seeing eye came whirring round the corner, the strangest thing happened. Something Alfred had never seen before. The flying robot's pupil opened and a laser blast shot out. Zap! Boom! The, it hit the poor octobot right up. It hit the poor octobot right on one of its three remaining arms. Clang. It clunked to the floor. The arm with the iron in its hand was now detached. The octobot was down to two arms. A bye butt. I never did care much for ironing, commented the robot butler. Zap. Boom. Another blast shot from the all-seeing eye. This one skimmed the top of Alfred's head, singeing his hair. Sizzle. Was that a warning shot or was it meant to kill? Whichever it was, it was too close for comfort. Alfred, 
Alfred picked up the antique silver tray the Octobot had been carrying and lifted it to his face, using it as a shield. Zap! To Alfred's surprise, the silver tray deflected the laser blast and it shot right back at the all-seeing eye. Zap! Boom! The, the flying robot blasted itself down the corridor. The boy couldn't help but smile as it hit the wall. Alfred seized his chance to get away. With the tray still in his hand, he hurried further down the corridor. At the end, a long spiral staircase led down to the servants' quarters. He leapt on the tray and using it as a skateboard, he sped down the stone steps. Clunk, clunk, clunk. It was fun. Alfred looked over his shoulder. No! The all-seeing eye was following close behind. Zap! Boom! Another laser shot. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Zap! Boom! And another. Clunk, clunk, clunk. This time, Alfred couldn't use the tray as a shield as he was standing on it. What's more, he was going way too fast to stop. Zap! Boom! Clunk, clunk, clunk. Alfred threw his weight to one side, deliberately swerving the tray into the wall. Smash! It scraped along the plasterwork, sending a cloud of dust and debris into the air as the boy continued his descent. Woomph! Clunk, clunk, clunk. The all-seeing eye raced straight into the cloud of dust. Losing sight of where it was headed, it bashed into the wall. Donk! It must have short-circuited. The life went out of it and it began bouncing down the steps like a mighty bowling ball. Boink, boink, boink. Alfred looked over his shoulder again. Clunk, clunk, clunk. The ball was bounding straight towards him. Boink, boink, boink. Clunk, clunk, clunk. As he reached the bottom step, he leaped off, he leapt off the tray and rolled to the side. Boink. The all-seeing eye bounced, bounced down onto the tray, sending it flying. Boom, clatter. The robot came to a stop further down the passage. Alfred looked up from the floor. The thing was fizzling back to life. Fizzle. Exhausted, the boy clambered to his feet. With his mother in the Tower of London, Alfred had only one ally in the palace. Nanny. She was the only one who could help him get right, who could help him right now. Ahead of him was a little hatch in the wall, just big enough for a boy, but too small for a giant eye. It was a laundry chute where all the sheets would slide down to the laundry room. As the all-seeing eye rose off the ground, its deadly pupil swivelling around in his direction, Alfred had no choice. He ran for the laundry chute and threw himself in. Whiz! He sped down the slide, landing in a big pile of dirty laundry, collected in a huge wicker basket. Alfred looked up from his comfy, if slightly smelly, bed. There were rows and rows of sinks and washing machines. This was the laundry room, all right. Knowing the all-seeing eye would still be looking for him, he leapt up from the pile of sheets and raced across to the door. Now he was in the corridor, deep underground. Alfred knew the servants' quarters were all the way down here, even if he'd never been before. There was a strict division in the palace. The royals could ne would never, ever venture down here. The boy crept along the rows and rows of doors until he found the one that he was sure was the right one. The door had the word Nanny engraved on it. Alfred lifted his hand, about to knock, before thinking better of it. It was far too dangerous wait, risking waking anyone else up, so instead he pushed down on the door handle. Locked. Just then he heard the sound of boots stomping along the ground, not too far off. Stomp, stomp, stomp. It must be my members of the Royal Guard on patrol. Alfred bent down so his mouth was right next to the keyhole. Nanny! He whispered through it. Nothing. Nanny! He was louder this time. Nanny! Louder still. As the boot steps were getting closer and closer, stomp, 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 the key in the lock clicked. Click. A hand reached out from behind the door and smothered his mouth. Alfred wanted to scream, but he couldn't let out a sound. That's the end of chapter 19. We'll continue on with chapter 20 soon. Bye.